Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for DockerCon 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Brian Gracely, and our next guest is Scott Hammond, who's the CEO of Joyent, and in the news lately, just sold the company to Samsung, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Joyent, uh, premier cloud provider, and also um, real stewards to the Node.js community, as well as just having a great uh, team over there, Brian Cantrell and folks we've interviewed in the past. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. All right, so uh, deal closes when? What, give, us a, give us a lay of the land of the, the news, just give us the quick highlights. You know, when did the deal get struck? When's this all this thing happen? You're going to stay on and yeah. lead the team. Give us the data. Yeah, sure, sure. So we uh, we signed the deal at about one in the morning on uh, Sunday morning a couple weeks ago, and then we announced it publicly last week, and we expect to close sometime this month. Um, and it's uh, for Samsung. It's all about extending the value of what they're bringing to the marketplace. They're very involved, obviously, in in mobile and IoT, connected car, smart home, kind of next generation uh, solutions to the market big markets, high growth, and they want to add a layer of cloud services to the, these late leading devices they have already and make a, a broader, more complete solution that makes these devices an integral part of the daily life for the consumer. So, so. Samsung's a huge company, so specifically That's the mobile group was behind this? That's right, this was really driven by the mobile group and they wanted to uh, build out these additional services and uh, very active in the community, big uh, customer of ours for a while, so. Uh, this is a real good so launch next customer. step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did they know they were getting the Node.js uh, bonus? I mean, because a lot of people are asking me on theCUBE, off yeah. camera, great deal, happy for joining. Samsung needs a cloud. Apple's right there on their doorstep. They're right. competing head to head. So iCloud, Samsung phones, you can see the dots connecting. That's but right. the question comes up, is like, whoa, Node, everyone loves Node.js. Yeah. And Node community. Yeah. Status to update, any changes, thoughts? So this uh, node was not a strategic aspect of this, uh, of this acquisition, uh, but they really like node because they're you know, obviously investing a lot in mobile and in IOT and that's, you know, that's kind of the wheelhouse for node. So um, They have no plans tampering with the momentum and the community? No, they're, they're happy about it. In fact, we had a lot of conversations last week where they want to know what they can do to help accelerate the project, what investment areas, what community support, how can they help? They're, they've been pretty good citizens in the open source community and they're big fans of Node, so I think this will be very positive for everybody in the Node community as well. Yeah, so we, you know, we were at IBM Interconnect a few months ago. They made a big deal about trying to do Apple Swift in their cloud. Uh, Samsung, huge proponents around Android. I mean, really probably the leading, right. you know, leading commercial Android. Does Joyent become the best place for sort of the back end of, of Android development? What's the, you know, what's the thinking there? I mean, Andro or, uh, Joyent always had very interesting technology and different enterprise, but do you guys shift to be much more mobile centric or how does this affect you guys? So, I think it affects us a lot, but if you look at where most of our new customers and new applications have been developed on the Joyent Cloud on Triton over the last few years, uh, a lot of them have been in web, mobile, and IoT. We've seen a lot of that. It's kind of the green field environment for a lot of organizations today. Um, so I think that, having said that, the developer community around Android, I think there are some pretty interesting opportunities for us to work with that group and help bring more services to them, a, a better platform for them that might be tied in with some of the other tools to uh, help make it a better place for the developer community, Android community, the Samsung development community. I think there are a lot of opportunities to work with that group as well. Are you going to stay on uh, in the group and what's the configuration of the team, any changes? Yeah, yeah, good question. So uh, we will be a wholly owned independent subsidiary of Samsung. So think about them as uh, having a very big commercial relationship with us. Uh, but investing a lot in our non-Samsung commercial business as well. So uh, this kind of turbocharges our business plan, so we'll be growing a lot faster than the business plan <laughs> of the VCs uh, was betting on, uh, which is good and exciting. Um, so yeah. Well, you got a ready-made market with the Android phones, for one. Right. Two, the pressure for cloud services. And three, they must have had a buy-build decision internally, how hard right. we've seen HP try to make a cloud and back yeah. out of that. So. Uh, we've been saying this a long time, cloud is hard. <laughs> right, and uh, so the good thing is, um, uh, so they do understand that, so they can appreciate 
you know, the expertise and how hard it is to build and run and manage these clouds. So in, the, in your relationship them. with Samsung Mobile, what, what are, and then you because you had a customer relationship with them, what did they hone in on, Scott? Were they uh, jazzed on the tech, the scope, size? Did they? They must have had a couple things that were key to them on the deal terms or from a technology perspective. Uh, te technology and expertise. Those are the two big things for them. So they spent a lot of time digging deeper on our Triton platform or on our Manta object store platform that has containers that are embedded in storage. You can just spin up your compute job right on the data. Uh, so those were those two technologies that Manta and then the Triton container as a service platform, that was just paramount for them. So they must have been so, totally stoked when you said uh, headroom for IOT. Because yeah. that really is interesting now, yeah. the stuff that you guys had and, and the tech Right. side that could not go well beyond the consumer for yeah. Samsung. Was yeah. that interesting to them or is that part of the plan? Yeah, well you think about you know, in IoT where you have all these devices that are periodically waking up, spraying data back to the cloud to be analyzed maybe on an event-driven basis. That's what our Manta Object Store was built for, was that in mind. To store tons of data, highly durable scale-out storage, very cheap, but you can, you can turn on computing now what people call serverless compute and we've been advocating that for a while. It's good to see now people endorse it, commercialize it, so we're not out there alone talking about serverless it. Serverless compute. That's, compute. that's compute. perfect, right, it's perfect how does that for work? the IoT world. How does that, how does serverless, serverless compute it's, work? It's, it's uh, the, the name's misleading, it really just means instead of thinking about a full application, you're just executing functions. You've got a small function, right. you want to do it over and over again, I don't want to think about scaling oh, a box. it. box, yeah, okay. And, it, and it's event driven, Could right? So you're not Could running be. these massive applications Sorry, all the time, it, okay. paying right. for it, so you're sitting there maybe event basically. driven, waiting for it, and then a function gets called or an event gets tripped, and now you're going to do your analytics or process your video file that's coming in, or stuff it back out, whatever, so it's more event driven, yeah. uh, on-demand computing. So what's your takeaway from this? As you, as you look back at the, at the joint journey, it's been interesting, you've seen the cloud early days right. to today. Um, for the folks watching out there, customers, as they look to architect their future cloud, enterprises to service providers, uh, what would you share with them as kind of what to do, best practices, I mean, you've seen it from the beginning. Yeah, and yeah. To today, the consolidation, the rebooting, the pivoting, the growth, the scale, the growth yeah. of Amazon, Azure, and others, um, Google, Docker. Yeah, what do you, what's, what's your, your advice uh, to uh, You know, a couple of things. Um, uh, first, you know, get going, start doing something right now. I think Docker has made it uh, easier to get speed and agility through your development cycle, uh, good delineation of tasks and responsibilities throughout your life cycle. Um, so it's easier to get the speed that most people want, and that's, that's what you know, I hear from every single customer, that what they're really after is speed and agility in their cycle, and, and they're going to get that now with cloud, with, with a container technology that's, and all the tool sets around that that's really in the forefront of, of today. Are so you guys going, going to offer more services to customers? Are you going to be funneling that through Samsung Mobile? No, so we're, we're, indep we're an independent, we will be an independent subsidiary of, of Samsung. So still supporting all of our customers. Still and Samsung. And Samsung, so think, think about Samsung as a giant anchor tenant for us. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, you have Amazon, yeah. AWS is Amazon, Google has the search engine, so now we have Samsung as a big So they're motivated as an, an owner to make some cash on the deal and make money from you guys, profit objective. Sure. So I'm expecting the head count to grow, you must have yeah. a mandate, yeah, yeah. My operating plan, can you share right. any color around the kind of scale it's that you're steep. gonna go <laughs> <laughs> up or down? Up. <laughs> no, up. Yeah, so yeah, they're, they're throwing, yeah, so you have a mandate. Yes, yeah, that's exciting. I think Brian brought a blog called, said this isn't our exit strategy, this is our entrance strategy, yeah. and it really is, because- A whole new company. You know, we, if you, we've been the technology disruptor, sometimes a little bit on the far, far extreme of that, but uh, what we've missed is uh, an injection of scale and credibility and global footprint uh, that really helps us when we're talking yeah. to the, a, the global 2000s. And you have a bankroll too behind it, with a relevant Big financial partner. strengths, global reach, yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna do, you're gonna be busy this year. Even busier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that's possible. Well, Scott, thanks yeah. so much for coming on the cube. Really appreciate right. it, and good luck. And uh, uh, excited for everyone at join. Yeah. And you guys knew thanks, you guys thanks. worked really hard. Yeah. Uh, it's been exciting to see the progress and uh, great outcome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And thanks, uh, the join is gonna stay thanks, wholly that, uh, yeah. subsidiary. Samsung Mobile certainly Android is gets stronger and stronger every day. And then obviously mobile, mobile first, mobile everywhere, cloud. Join Samsung. 
big announcement. Uh, Scott Hammond here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracely. We'll be right back. You're watching theCUBE.